Hi, this is Jan with Jan's Jewelry Supplies. Today we're going to be making this hinged soldered rhinestone bracelet. I have all of my supplies here and I will be adding a supply list at the end of the video. There are a couple of items I would like to show you. First, this is the hinge that I'll be using. I'm using two of those between each piece, piece that I solder. And this is a soldering box clasp. Once you uh, attach one of these, they become almost invisible. All you can see is the little tab. Okay, I have all of my supplies laid out to the side. I'm going to go ahead and begin rolling out my Play-Doh. Uh, it requires seven of these. Actually, I have a small wrist. Uh, probably eight would be better but we're going with seven, which means if you want to go with eight, you need uh, three more of the 10 millimeter squares and six more of the 10 by five baguettes. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start laying out the pieces. Okay, I have all of my pieces laid out, so I'm going to go ahead and start soldering them. I'm using 300 degree preflux solder along with a heat gun. And basically you're just going to be drawing, you're going to heat up the settings and you're going to be drawing a line between each setting. You want to make a connection at every possible point. Okay, I have my seven individual pieces soldered together. I'm going to go ahead and start applying the hinges. I'm going to lay out enough Play-Doh to do three. I'm just going to do three so that you get a good idea of what it is I'm doing. But you're going to want seven. Uh, if you decide to do eight, you will also need two more hinges along with the three 10 millimeter squares and the additional six uh, 10 by five baguettes. Just gonna line these up on this Play-Doh and you're gonna wanna make sure that you have some good spacing in between the two. It's gonna be about an eighth of an inch. It could probably be a little bit less, but I'm a little concerned about soldering the uh, hinge open basically so I'm leaving a little extra room once you have them lined up and even you're gonna go in and lay down some solder on the area where the hinges will be laying and like right now I'm doing the top square and I will do the square next to it and then I will go to the other square and then go to the square across from it and on the other two uh, what's butting up together is the baguette so I'm going to lay some solder on the baguettes on the top and the bottom I have my solder laid down so now I'm going to go ahead and place my hinges and you want to make sure that they are even uh, if they are like off center then it's not going to fold properly so you want to get them as even as possible 
Basically, the little hinged portion should be centered in between the two pieces. And I'll be using my pliers part of the time to just add a little bit of pressure to make sure that the solder that I laid down adheres to the hinges. Okay, I have seven pieces soldered together. Keep in mind that you will probably want eight instead of seven. I'm going to show you how the hinges work. See, they're even, so it is able to completely make a circle. Now all we have to do is add the clasp to the end. I'm going to go ahead and lay out some play down for both ends. I don't need a piece to go all the way across because I'm not going to be heating up the whole piece, but you do want a, a pretty good amount just to cover the ends and make sure they're secure and that when you heat them up they're not going to fall apart. So anytime you're heating up an area you want to make sure that you've got a base underneath there holding it. By base, I mean the Play-Doh, or you could use uh, J-Board or a uh, wet floral foam also works. I just like to use the Play-Doh. As you can see, the Play-Doh is holding more than just the ends of it. It's going to keep the pieces next to where I'm working secure. I'm just checking to make sure that it is laying flat so that I can add the clasp. And this piece is sitting a little bit high on one end, so I'm trying to adjust the Play-Doh to where it'll hold the clasp in place. I'm going to go ahead and lay down some solder on both ends, and I'm going to use two clasps on this. If I had a wide clasp in silver, I would use that, but instead I've got two small clasps. They're about a quarter inch wide. When you solder these, what would normally be the top of the clasp, that is going to be facing down. It, the top will face the piece that you're soldering. And that's the same for both ends. You're going to want the box on one end and the tongue on the other end. I'm going to go ahead and begin laying down some Play-Doh on both ends. Okay, now that I have my solder laid down, I'm going to go ahead and add the clasp. I'm just checking to make sure what's the top and the bottom. Once you've taken them apart, it's hard to tell which end is the, or which side is the top and the bottom on the uh, box portion. I am just going to eyeball these and try and get them positioned the same on both ends. The opening will go towards the outside. 
Now that I have uh, both of the clasps positioned, I'm going to go ahead and take the heat gun and reheat the solder. I'm using the pliers to keep the box portion of the clasp stable. Okay, I now have the uh, box portion soldered and I am now going to lay down a little bit of solder to uh, solder down the tongue portion. On these tongues, you don't want to push them all the way back. Uh, they need to be out a little bit. The base of it is about, um, about half an inch and you probably only want to solder down about a quarter of an inch of that. If you get it too far back, whenever you go to put the two sides together, you won't be able to push down on the little tab that's at the top. It gets caught behind the rhinestones if it's too close together. I'm just checking to make sure I've got them going the right direction. And I'll take a little bit of Play-Doh just to help hold them in place while they're being soldered. Like I said earlier, I'm just kind of eyeballing this since this is a smaller piece. Uh, you can kind of eyeball it. If it was a larger piece, you probably have to do some measuring to make sure you've got them positioned correctly. You just want the tongues positioned basically in the same position as the boxes because they're going to have to go around and meet the other side. I'm going to tap them down and make sure that they're actually touching the solder. And then when you start heating them up, you're, you're going to want to apply a little bit of pressure to make sure that the solder does adhere to the tongues. I'm going to go ahead and start applying some heat. We now have our completed bracelet. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.